A very good morning to all of you. I am going to discuss the topic of ionic equilibria and pH. I am Dr. Harsha Jatrak and uh, the today's topic is the most important topic for your career in chemistry. So let's see who discovered pH. pH was first introduced by a Danish scientist Soren Peder Lorentz Sorensen at Carlsberg University in 1909 and it was then revised in 1924. Number of definitions were given to this concept and the measurements were made by electrochemical cells. The first electronic method of measuring pH was invented by Arnold Orivelle Backman at California Institute of Technology in 1934. He was the first to discover an electronic map device to measure the pH. So what does pH stand for? P in pH means the potential. Small p it stands for negative logarithm and H stands for hydrogen. So pH means the potential of hydrogen. pH measures hydrogen ion concentration in solution. That means the how many hydrogen ions are present in the solution. We know that water dissociates to give hydrogen and hydroxyl ions. This, some of these hydrogen ions reassociate with water to form hydronium ion H3O plus. So we can define pH as the negative logarithm of hydronium ion concentration to the base 10 or negative logarithm of hydrogen ion concentration to the base 10. So the pH represents the when we talk about the concentration of hydronium ion hydronium ion concentration of or activity of hydrogen hydronium ion or hydrogen ion represents the molarity of the solution. So the molarity of any solution can be used for calculating of pH. We can find out the value of pOH or vice versa. We can find out the value of pH if we know the value of pOH. We need why we need the products for alkaline products for ET and which products they are acidic in nature and what are their benefits and which products are basic in nature or alkaline in nature. Now we can also define pH in terms of activity. Now what is activity? Activity means the effective concentration of the solution that means the concentration of the solution which actually take part in the reaction. So that is represented by small a and pH is equal to negative logarithm of activity of hydrogen ion concentration to the base 10. So we can instead of concentration we use activity in terms activity is the actual concentration of the solution. So we can let's solve some problems based on this. The first is we calculate the pH and POH of KOH solution having concentration 5 into 10 raised to minus 3. This concentration of solution is 5 into 10 raised to minus 3 and it is KOH solution. So KOH dissociates to give you K-I-N and O-H-I-N. Therefore 
the POH will be equal to minus log of 5 into 10 raised to minus C that is 1.3. 1.3 is the POH. So what will be the pH value over here? A total POH plus uh, pH is equal to 14. Therefore, pH will be 14 minus 1.3 that is 12.69. So, the, PO, the uh, pH of this KOH solution is 12.6 is 0.1 molar and you are given the value of Ka. What is Ka? Dissociation constant of acetic acid. That is 1.8 into 10 raised to minus. We have to consider the dissociation. We have to consider what type of acid or base is it. If it is highly acidic, if it is highly basic, in that case we will not be able to neglect the value of x. Because in this case it is weakly acidic. Therefore we have neglected because the dissociation will be very very less. Okay. Is, is it clear to all of you? I hope the concept of pH is clear to all of you. pH can be is of three types. It defines whether a particular solution is acidic, basic or neutral. The acidic value is below 7. Basic value is above 7. Value at 7 is called the neutral and pH helps in finding out what sort of ingredients are present in particular type of substance. It helps us to decide whether this particular thing is eatable or suitable for us for eating or not. Whether we can do some important work with this particular ingredient for example whether we will be able to do saponification with sodium hydroxide or not because that will provide saponification means the production of soaps so all the sodium hydroxide is highly alkaline in nature and we need alkaline soaps Therefore, when sodium hydroxide is added to the fatty acids, it gives a precipitate of soap, palmitic sodium palmitate, sodium oleate or other fatty acids are precipitated which are converted into soaps. So, we can easily find out what is the nature of the given compound or how it can be used where it can be used and why it can be used. Thank you.